now that I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, we kind of stopped at that slide, and, and that is really just a, a um, pest, not even pest. Uh, um, a, a, there should be as well an environmental and legal uh, aspect, which is now, of course, kind of packed uh, uh, into the political and social cultural uh, elements. But not, nonetheless, so at the organizational change level that, that we have kind of experienced and that you will be very likely to face, those are the indicators you have to look out for in your project. Now it's just a list because this is as good as it gets on a general basis. You have to basically figure out the details based on your contextual setting. And this often doesn't come from you as a project manager, but you have normally a team that works towards you with source information. So ask your experts to give you the right stuff on this. Sometimes you, you get it for free from a, a web page as well. So for example, uh, um, political factors can be uh, government legislation, so this is a kind of environment you're, you're operating in. Then uh, uh, sometimes an uh, uh, interesting one is government ideologies. Yeah, they, they can as well impact on, on how you may be allowed to do things. So South Africa, again, I give you the controversial one. I said, uh, I told you before, uh, uh, positive discrimination. Yeah, so um, because I was kind of a... Uh, um, typical business person and they wanted to encourage uh, um, diversity in businesses, they basically discriminated against, uh, uh, so the, the, the worst combination was male, then uh, they, they had as well uh, um, uh, um, ethnicity, so I was white as well, this was as well bad. Then I, I didn't, I wasn't married, so this was terrible too. Yeah, and uh, so based on that, you would be taxed differently, and companies would have to pay a slight penalty for taking me on. Uh, they could justify it if there was nobody else applying, and nobody else applied. Yeah, but uh, um, the uh, uh, still, you you had to basically uh, kind of uh, um, counterbalance this. So as a project manager, you you too may come into a situation where where you have uh, ideologies kind of impacting on your project. Yeah, I mean we we have that really wherever we are. It's just sometimes we are more used to the ideologies uh, versus uh, um, other ones that, that may sp seem strange to us as an individual. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, then international law may be applicable as well. Uh, universal rights. Uh, um, now here again, uh, um, yeah, this is a good practice, I hope. Uh, then uh, wars may as well impact. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we live in a, a quite uh, a rapid time where, where we have actually quite a bit going on there. Then uh, local regulations maybe as well. Uh, taxations, of course, uh, uh, trade union activities. And you, you should really have here as well kind of um, third sector uh, involvement or, or um, outreach activities. So they, they should be probably as well part of that. Then, uh, we, we, uh, do, do you have any questions to those? I mean, it's just factors like headings. Yeah? So the specifics would be kind of uh, um, according to your project uh, environment, uh, um, more or less uh, important. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, then uh, social cultural factors, uh, maybe uh, demographic trends, uh, uh, customers and employees. Or, or um, in, in Europe, where we have an exciting experiment at the moment. Uh, um, uh, what, what does uh, demographic trends mean if we have, by average, 1.4 children? What does that mean? What, what have we decided as a society then? Pardon? Yeah. So we have only one to two children, and uh, the majority is even uh, uh, having less than two children. So this means that the society shrinks. Uh, this means as well that uh, um, it, it gets more and more difficult to recruit probably young people. No? Okay, people are indifferent about it, but uh, uh, think about it, it's a big thing. Yeah? Uh, in, in Europe, we, we play that uh, game uh, um, a little bit ahead at the moment in, in that race of trying this experiment is Japan, and then closely followed by uh, countries like Sweden, Germany, they, they are just behind there. In, in England, we, we have recovered, uh, uh, but the Welsh, they're, they're not really going with this. So they, they drag a little bit here the, uh, the statistics down for us. But uh, here it's, we are still around two, we are 1.78. So we are still kind of looking at the two, which means like kind of even population. Yeah. 
So this is quite uh, interesting. This means uh, what, uh, this has knock-on effects on this well, kind of economic and technology. Um, you, you will have probably as well too much infrastructure then. Yeah? So uh, uh, buildings may be surplus. So most drastic examples are places like, uh, um, uh, for example, Berlin. Yeah? Uh, um, uh, in, in the 90s when I grew up, yeah, um, I as a student could afford a 200 square meter flat with 4 meter 50 ceiling height, which was reserved to the luxury elite class in Berlin in 1920. But since then, there were too few people. So it was a city built for 20 million and had only 3.4 million citizens. Yeah? So this is pretty cool for students. Uh, not, not so cool if you have invested in real estate at the time. Yeah? Uh, there was, very, you know, as a student, you don't have a lot. Well, really, I, I wasn't willing to pay a lot of money for the flat. So, uh, and, yeah, so there, there was a bad part. So. Yeah, and and that, that has as well to do uh, uh, slightly with demographic and uh, customers and employees. Uh, so big markets in, in uh, uh, decreasing uh, uh, population means as well that the young don't have the same bargaining power. Yeah, whereas if you have a lot of children, then young generations can kind of uh, determine as well what products they want. Oh, lifestyle. Yeah, next topic, lifestyle changes. Yeah, So that, that becomes um, a more or less pressing. Uh, skills availability. Now, this is an interesting one. I have just a talk actually for construction. I didn't see anybody from you. This was really sad. But uh, um, I was down in London in the Institute for Civil Engineers. Yeah, engineers, I uh, think you call it. Yeah, and uh, institution, sorry. And uh, um, we had a workshop on organizational capacity. How can we uh, kind of create uh, um, yeah, organizational capacity at a cost efficient way? And what, what uh, the talk was mainly about, or, or my talk was about, was about skills. And my economic statistical indicators tell me we don't have really a skills shortage except in a few areas, project management being one. This is really cool. Yeah? Well, because well, what does the skill shortage actually mean or availability? It means there are fewer people that can do the job, so you can kind of decide how much you want to charge for it. Yeah? You look in your order book like, oh, I'm kind of full for the next two months, but uh, and here I have already an offer, a pretty good price. What, what, what can you take? Yeah? But this is a bad position. So if, if you want a good deal, yeah, you, you are looking for somebody that has it, then it's problematic. So there are a few specialist trades as well, where we see the trend of, of uh, uh, shortages. Yeah, so uh, specialist uh, um, uh, uh, trades and uh, uh, specialist contractors. There, there is really a skill shortage in the UK. So that is where the biggest pay increase in, in construction. Yeah? If, if you map it against compared wages, you can see that they have really gained. Yeah? project management as well. But now uh, there's a um, pull from the government. They, they try to go in with higher education, no wait, higher, what is he, uh, apprentice, hi, hi, hi. acronyms. Yeah, so it was certainly not higher, yeah, but uh, um, uh, the, we, we uh, um, have a government scheme at the moment that works with large employers together to make uh, project management, at least the support functions, yeah, so really the uh, hands-on stuff, like uh, working out kind of the schedules, making wonderful time plans for you, working with information models that uh, where, where we talk 4D. Yeah? So it's over time snapshots, so kind of the hands-on technical stuff. Um, that, that is now an apprenticeship that is offered. Yeah? And it's higher uh, um, vocational level. So it starts at vocational level two and goes to five, which is the equivalent of a bachelor, uh, which is interesting. So this is what the government and, and employers try to do at the moment about it. But in the meantime, you're still in a good position because even if that thing runs, then you're very good support staff yeah, on your projects. So this is wonderful. It's a win-win situation for you. Yeah? Uh, um, now, skills availability, big factor. In, in some places, we may not have the skills. We, we have to incentivize uh, populations to learn that. Yeah? So the, the big famous ones are, are the big uh, world uh, IMF or, or uh, World Bank project, yeah, where the fisher was yesterday still fishing and, and uh, making like maybe a dollar a day, yeah, was selling all the fish. And then he's like, hey, if you build me a brick house, I pay you $30 a day. Yeah, so this is incentivizing basically the fisher to stop fishing and starting laying bricks. Yeah, I mean, it's simplified, uh, uh, basically uh, um, summarized, but sometimes you have to train and create an infrastructure to kind of sustain basically the projects you are having. Yeah? So this may mean training. 
yeah, lo looking locally. And uh, um, local involvement of stakeholders is powerful because people buy into the projects you're doing. Yeah? So it's a win-win situation. But, but do it sensibly. Uh, don't, don't do the emphasis that I just did with the fish up. That's just a bad idea. Yeah? If you have no fish anymore, then the one guy that says fish will ask for $100. Yeah? And uh, yeah, that will create dynamics. Um, attitudes to work and employment is another one. Yeah? So you may have people uh, um, yeah, that, that uh, um, like to come to work, they buy in, into the job. You uh, may have people that just want the money yeah, because they have something that they want to buy or look after. Then attitudes to uh, minority groups is another one. So there, there may be groupings that you may not be even aware. Uh, um, so this is again, uh, th this is not just uh, um, uh, this is not just race. This, this can be anything. Yeah? So you can have groupings. Football teams is a classic one. Yeah? Here we, uh, uh, we have Sunderland and we have Newcastle. Yeah? And uh, we should share for both teams. This is controversial now. But uh, uh, the, what I'm saying is, you, you know, uh, um, you, you should uh, be aware of this and uh, make sure that you manage for this. Yeah? Maybe create awareness if you have teams of this to cater for that. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, gender issues uh, in general, uh, um, uh, if, if there are any uh, uh, yeah, preset perceptions how, how things should be and how they may be. Then uh, willingness and ability to move. Uh, we were back at the old chestnuts. And concern for environment. Uh, um, and next to that, you, you have again the business ethics, yeah? uh, uh, which is uh, very, very interesting. Economic uh, factors is uh, competitors, suppliers, uh, cu currency exchange rates. Now, this is again uh, my personal tip. The European Central Bank just announced they are going to lower the euro. Now is the time to make a safe bet. If you have 10,000 flying around, so you basically buy the currency when it's very low, you sell when it's up against your currency. This is the idea. All I'm saying, in West Germany, when East Germany and West Germany was united, there was like uh, um, one D-Mark at the time, Western D-Mark, was worth eight Eastern Denmark, then we agreed to kind of raise social standards for both countries, which means one Denmark would be worth one Denmark in three months. Now that was an incentive for a lot of West Berliners at the time, I can tell you that. Yeah. So be before they drove a little VW, afterwards they were driving a different car, yeah? all I'm saying. So, uh, um, so with things like that, you, you have incentivized notions. Uh, um, actually, in projects, we, we often uh, work with uh, um, frames of security. Uh, so currency is normally accounted. Uh, you mentioned that in some currencies, we go with a safe currency. Uh, we, we go by dollar. But uh, for, for example, in South Africa, we had the rate to the big currency of 20% threshold, which is a lot. Uh, so you, you made a lot of money. Even if the project went wrong, you may have still created the profit in US dollar. No? So th this was quite interesting. Um, you, you have employment rates as well, uh, wage rates, uh, um, then government economic policies. Uh, um, so there, there are the local hooks uh, uh, or national hooks. Other country uh, uh, countries' economic policies, uh, what, what could they be? What, what are other countries? So working with uh, main contractors from other countries, you would of course accommodate it, yeah? not, not like confront them with the difference and say like, no, this is not working in this country. Uh, um, lending policies of financial institutions, so you may have securities or you may have to secure assets against it. Uh, uh, changes from public or private ownership is as well one. Technology fact, uh, uh, factors is an interesting one too. So here we have again the information technology, the internet as well. Uh, um, yeah, and so the cool stuff is not, of course, as well, availability of information and how you may want to hide your own information. Yeah, especially if you have, if you're a knowledge worker, uh, you may have uh, um, certain things that you have developed that you are um, selling competitively. Uh, new production processes. Uh, um, yeah, here, so things like uh, digitalization on the frontier, yeah, where you just uh, uh, order basically online what you want and the capacity is booked for you to make the product. Yeah. For example, I just figured out I get my new Samsung laptop that's just ordered, so it should be there tomorrow. It's just amazing. I'm so happy. Yeah, so uh, it's a bad example, but uh, um, I finally got my budget through. And uh, um, so, you know, th this would be then the knock-on effect uh, uh, work-wise. So work has a budget, yeah, well accounted for, 
and I should be working with this already. I'm still working on my old one, so now it's basically coming through. Yeah. And uh, uh, changes in transport technology. Yeah, there are many more. Yeah. Okay, so those are the factors. I, I won't bore you uh, uh, much more with this. What I wanted to do now is uh, uh, kind of jump to the to a wonderful example to get our head around it, and uh, I've changed it to the pins. So. So after the long talk, uh, um, I, I want to just get the feeling. Oh, this, this is. Uh, um, did you want to join as well? Actually, it doesn't matter. We can do it as well. Though. I wanted to have a little bit of discussion groups as well, tables. So either like uh, uh, two groups or three groups. I'm, I'm happy with either. And so you, you can already orient if, if you see like a, a easy way of doing this. Uh, um, so the question is really: uh, um, Do project managers need? to have technical expertise? Is it better if you have grown up in the particular project environment that, that you are managing yeah, or not? And uh, um, non-technical competences are, are as well uh, key traits of the PM. Now, to, to actually uh, um, look at that, I, I want you to design your organizational structure. So um, your company makes biro pens. Do you know what a biro pen is? Yes, there, there is one. Very good. Okay, all right. Go. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So uh, um, should organizational structure be based on function or product? Just as a simple starting point. Yeah? What, what is better? What are the implications from this formal side on our informal side? Yeah? What does it mean for us as managers? Where do we get the insight? What are the dynamics? This is what we try to come to. Yeah? Your company makes a viral pen. So it's an intense business model that better sell. Yeah? Uh, uh, no, I'm just joking. But uh, this involves uh, three operations. Operation T, yeah? making the plastic tube. T for tube. Yeah? Then operation C, making the plastic cup. C for cup. Yeah? Uh, and Operation I for ink holder. Yeah? That, does that make sense? Yeah. Now, each biro requires a tube, a cup, and an ink holder. The different machinery making these items varies in age and is replaced on a regular cycle. We have priced it in. Don't worry about it. Yeah? Uh, uh, so somebody built it for us a long time ago, where we are kind of now just uh, ma making the most of it. The, the manufacturing team consists of a plant manager and three supervisors. So uh, th this could be our director, yeah? and then three project managers, if you want, or team managers. Yeah? We can uh, uh, interchange that uh, uh, to our needs. And then uh, um, nine operators. Now it needs three people to run each unit. Yeah? Uh, under these circumstances, this business could be departmentalized by function or by product. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. So fu function-based structure, uh, um, this is uh, organized as three functional departments. Each department could produce three units of production per day. Not so. That's pretty good. Is it? No, not sure actually. But uh, um, so you have the manager overlooking kind of the supervisors, and the supervisors kind of look after the three uh, um, operators that are in their silos. Yeah, so how, how would that look uh, uh, physically? How, how would that be? How, how would that look? Yeah, so and, and uh, production-wise, what, what would we do here? Yeah, what, what was T? Tube. Yeah. So tube number one, so one Okay, this is made up. Yeah, so three people would make one tube, tube to the side, next tube, tube to the side, third tube, tube to the side. We have three tubes. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Yeah. So they would work individually on, on their segmented uh, piece. We, we do that with planes, for example. Yeah. So a wing. Uh, uh, actually, uh, let's take a wonderful UK example. This is well one of the made in Britain. It's, it's in my skills cluster. We, we kind of 
advertised uh, different technology. So for the uh, Boeing, um, uh, Airbus uh, 320, <laughs> no, nobody noticed this, yeah, this little slip in between. Uh, uh, for the Airbus uh, 320, we manufactured actually near Wales. So they even have their own football club. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, um, the, the workers, I should add, they're, they're not bad, right? They're four sleepers or something? Not good, but not bad. Force is pretty good, right? This is like they, they can actually seriously play. This is not like my Sunday, like eleven aside. Uh, okay, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I get off track. Pardon? They played against Liverpool. Oh, they have. And the Europa League qualifying round. And? Oh, okay. <laughs> I would have been surprised to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> thought it was a tight game and and. Uh, no, but uh, and the, the key point is, uh, uh, planes, for example, are built like this. You have one side where you make all the wings. Yeah? So you uh, are basically they are ordering, how, how many planes are we doing? We, we do 10. OK, can you make 10 wings? Then you have like basically one wing, two wing, and then you, you change it, basically the setting, and you make them the other way around. Yeah? So uh, um, actually, that is not fully true. But uh, um, this is roughly the idea behind it. Yeah? It's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Now this is departmentalized, yeah, uh, or function based. Then we have the product based uh, structure. Now here you have uh, um, one operator from T for Q, yeah, one operator from C for K, yeah, and one operator from I for ink. Yes, super. Yeah. Now they work together. I make under one supervisor one pen. Then. Supervisor number two makes a pen. Supervisor number three makes a pen. That does that make sense? Okay. So uh, um, yeah, and again, uh, uh, each worker carries out each of the three tasks. So that that is quite interesting too, right? So they they kind of have some side. Here are the questions to be addressed. I, I want you to discuss it and give me answers to this. Yeah. In which structure is the job? of the supervisor likely to be more difficult of the supervisor. Then in which structure will the supervisors be most qualified to be promoted to plant manager level or compete? He's off sick. Have you considered my work? I'd be more efficient. I can make four viral pens a unit or something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, so that, that, that gets actually edgy, uh, but uh, uh, maybe not so aggressive. Which structure produces a greater division of labor for operators? But what does it mean, division of labor? But what is a division of labor? Greater? Yeah, actually, you did the right sign. Uh, yeah, you, you just have different uh, um, uh, kind of workers. Yeah, so they, they don't see similarity in the job next to them. So you're only by yourself. You are the one doing the cap. And the other one is doing the tube. Are you with me? Yeah? Then uh, which structure conflicts between departments most likely to occur? So which structure uh, generates conflict at, at the department level? Yeah? That, does that make sense? Yeah, so one was a product based and one was a function based. Which one uh, creates more likely conflict between the departments and why? Which structure allows the better comparison of each supervisor's performance? Yeah. And then which structures produces operators who can easily be promoted to supervisor level? Is there one better than the other? Yeah. And then last but not least, uh, uh, with which structure will the firm be most affected if one department shuts down through equipment failure or strikes? I like that this is from a book. I would not have put strikes there, but uh, never mind. Yeah, so uh, um, if there is a failure, which one is most likely to fail? OK, do, do you want to work in two groups? Yeah. So if, if you go as four and, and you move over here, yeah. 